the coordinator of the script, who was a coordinator of the script, which helped Bill and I tremendously get things in the can and move on. I mean, I, I can see the position of being a coordinator and the fact that uh, a new business coming into town, that this, this person would coordinate with the HADC efforts to do the uh, ribbon cutting, you know, the from the ribbon cutting, or do a site visit, uh, work with James Gordon or whatever, and facilitate some things there. I mean, uh, to me, that kind of all falls into the fact that he's, that this person is a director, providing direction to I mean, but, you know, it's, it's, it goes back to exactly what Mark says is, you know, everybody's interpreting what is, uh, what is what is a director, what is a coordinator, what is an advisor, what is liaison, and this is all saying different. You know, this statement says there's different things there. Make it one word. Well, you did say like uh, coordinator in your mind, like committee member. What did you just say, Nick? Uh, he's, a, he's a board member. He's a board member of the HACC and the HADC. That's because our bylaws. On the chamber side, I don't know about the HADC. That's correct. And I think as you have words that are more inclusive, like coordinator, the whole intent is to try to keep it somewhat open. Um, to help keep the overall length of the job description um, to somewhat of a minimum. Because the last thing we want to do is end up like Wall and have examples of duties and have a list of 25 different functions that are just examples of what that position is. Well, I there. agree with that. I, I'm just concerned about the fact that, uh, you know, we could do that, that, uh, that vague coordinator description is to, uh, could it sort of be a catch-all for anything anybody wants to throw into it. So let's... Yeah, yeah. Let's, you know, if you, if you eliminate a coordinator and say advisor and liaison and chamber and accountants and HABC, I, I, I'm fine with that. 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 If you say get rid of the coordinator, coordinator say just advisor, the advisor and liaison and chamber and is that the same thing, Brad? Mm -hmm. Not wild about the idea of liaison, but I can live with that. Advisor and liaison, and chamber and Congress and the changes. In essence, that's the same thing that, you know, that, that's still covering the same thing that Bill and I, Bill Zorp and I relied on for Gary. I mean, advisor slash liaison when it came to stuff we needed to do our job. And would it say assist as a coordinator of, of the chamber or to, to the chamber? Then we have to change it to the chamber. Assist as a, as, as an advisor on the liaison. Not of, uh, but to the chamber. Yeah. 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 So that's the same thing as So let's go through, I mean, as it sits right now, this line here. Uh, Bill, you'd like to see coordinator removed, but let's go down around the table and see where we're at. So Scott, this line sits, would you be okay with the coordinator staying or being removed? I'm fine with being removed. Bill, uh, Doyle? I'm fine either way if the coordinator's removed, fine. Brad? I can support it either way. Brian? Either way. Mark? I think if you take coordinator out, you lose the day-to-day -day function. Because you've already taken day-to-day -day out of the <coughs> coordinator. I think you take coordinator out, I think day-to-day -day and coordinator is out the door, and then all you have is advisor and liaison, and I'm not going to vote for that. What's the liaison, the liaison you don't know? <clears throat> is that similar to coordinator though? I don't think a liaison necessarily coordinates anything. The liaison certainly doesn't take care of any day-to-day -day operations. Well, but he could act as, I'm sorry, this position could act as the liaison between the you know, to the Chamber of Commerce and HADC versus the really other, you know, whether it be the City Council or City Administrator, or, or maybe it is with the Decatur, you know, and he's headed there. there. There's a difference between liaison and day-to-day -day operations. I agree. So, I mean, day-to-day -day operations has been removed, and if you take coordinator out, then all it is is advisor and liaison. Is, is coordinator okay I mean, are you, are you no, really that? Is that? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I don't agree with that. Facilitate for them. Yeah. Well, facilitate. Facilitate. 
let's um, we'll facilitate it. Let's come back. That's an awful disadvantage. <laughs> <laughs> We spent a lot of time. Well, let's come back to this one. I'm, I'm keep going through this thing, so we keep kind of knocking some other things out. Let's obviously we're stuck on coordinating a little bit. Well, um, maybe before before you do that, I, I mean, Mark brings up a topic here. I mean, uh, Mark Mark wants to have day to day operations. That's one. Of, that's a re Mark, correct? That's why you want to have one, one or the other. I I just think it. I think it needs. I think there is a place for either coordinating or day-to-day -day functions. What those are, I think, is a, is a separate topic. I, I don't know how you get around not having an asterisk by that to take the, to take the opinion out of it. Because if, if this person is paying bills, some people are going to be upset by that, and some people aren't. If this person's picking up mail, some people will be upset, and some people won't. If this person is making hotel reservations, some people will be upset, and some people won't. And if you do not spell it out tonight, right. every time there's an issue, it's going to be brought before the council, everybody's going to be here, everybody's going to voice their opinion on whether or whether that person should or should not be making reservations, catering food, and on and on and on and on. There is no way around it. And I'll, I'll just, <clears throat> that's fair enough. I'll just be clear though, that I don't believe that the position should be responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of either one of the organizations. And I don't like the term coordinator because I think it's just a catch-all for everything. Do you have any, any other suggestion then, Bill, if it's not coordinator for it's in this day-to-day? -day? I mean, no, my suggestion was to eliminate coordinator and say that he serves she was, serves and or assists as an advisor and liaison for the Chamber of Commerce and HADC. Teresa's got the answer. Well, I don't have the answer, but just my opinion for doing this for a while and trying to coordinate with both the groups and the council and keep everything running and going. Right now we got a seven page job description that allows a lot of duties, some duties right. not, or whatever. You know, I don't agree putting the day-to-day -day task in there, because that's very raw, that's very, we got seven people up here with very different opinions and views. And I tell you what, if I was the employee coming in, just from being the employee now of it, what do I do what I don't do? Because this group wants you to do this, whether it be like say, ordering food, doing invitations, making posters, do you do that or you not? You know, the job description now allows you to organize some of that stuff, but if it's not spelled out, you're going to have the same problem with the new person coming in that you have it now. You're going to have one person thinks you should do this, one person thinks you should do that. It, I think you need a little bit, some kind of clarification in it, otherwise you're going to have an employee with no direction again. Well, then you're going to have problems again. Back to too many cooks in the kitchen, you don't know. <laughs> well, but that's going to happen. Yeah. That's yeah. going to happen every every year when we get new faces on the council. Do and you have ideas. an opinion, Teresa, after you, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I mean, you've been kind of doing this role for, for a short while now. Do you think with the different things that you've experienced over the past month that being a coordinator has set these groups up more for success? Do you think that's needed out of this position? I think the groups have stepped up and, and done a lot of the duties that I think Gary was just doing, and that was just because he had always been doing it and whatnot. When they stepped up, so Bob, Bob, um, Justin, and, and, and I mean, the groups have stepped up and are doing, you know, some more activities that Gary used to do. So I don't think it should be a secretarial position, you know, um, or I don't think it should be courting all their events. I mean, Chambers now, um, you know talking about and organizing their annual thing. You know, I'm not doing much at all with that. They're doing all of that on their own. They should be doing that, you know. So, I mean, they're stepping up and they're doing that. I don't think it needs to be a secretary position, you know, but um, I do think that person needs to assist them or have the flexibility to assist them if they need it. If they, you know, if they're busy and um, the bill needs to get a hold of, you know, so all the members and doesn't have time to sign them up, how, I got how that, that, that covered by being an advisor and, and liaison? How 
was that meant by the Well, I think I think the word maybe maybe we're stuck here to take that and say the same instead of saying serves and or assist, why don't we say assist as a coordinator? You're not being a coordinator, you're assisting. Okay. Well, that's kind of Scott's point. Assist yeah. as a coordinator and serve as the advisor liaison to the Chamber of Commerce and HADC. Yeah. That's what it says right now. But it says serves and or assist. You know what I mean? So you could, you know, people can uh, you take those, those words that way, Mark. Say, so just well, take serve off. Well, what are you losing by taking coordinator off from your objective? I just don't think advisor and liaison covers coordination, though. That's, I mean, that's fine. So if we. I think, Brad, in the discussion, you know, there, there, there's got to be some leeway, right? I think that's what the organizations are looking for, is some leeway. Mm -hmm. that, that's what I took from the conversations. Am I right, Scott? Okay, you're saying it. The, the organizations are looking for a little bit of leeway, right? And I think it, your definition of leeway would be what? You know, some, because when we redid it back in, well, forever, you know, we went through with our red pen and we basically crossed over and they wanted us to kind of back off of it, if I, if I remember the, the word correct. Am I missing something like that? Uh, backed off as far as what? Well, just, you know, try not to be so tender on the news. Oh, as far as us as council? Yeah. Or as a, yeah, yeah, yes. Okay. So I think if we change the wording like we have it now, it's just as a coordinator, but serves as an advisor and liaison. And serves as an advisor and liaison. Well, you're going to have to put in here what a coordinator is. Why? Well, what is it? What the somebody, heck is that? Somebody coordinates. Well, I, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, just to, you know, I mean, Tracy used the word coordinate several times when she was speaking, right? she coordinates and stuff. Can we go, right? like, I mean, maybe, can we maybe go down the table and, and kind of take a consensus on how this board meets and get a feel for what people are having to say support? Sure. So, so Mark, as it's worded right now, would that be something you support? I love it. Brian? Yep. Brian? Yes. I believe in this instance, coordinator is really stating that you know they're going to have to do uh, some talking with both uh, <coughs> boards to possibly assist in areas. So that's, that's, right. Right. that's yes. right. That's what I think coordinators being utilized in this one. That's why I'm not doing it. Well, that's, that's what you're saying. Uh, that's why I know that I mean, somebody else might think something is hard. So is that a yes to it? Yeah. yeah. They may think that uh, coordinating may involve uh, coordinating all the arrangements for uh, this activity or that activity. So I, I'm not just doing that. that. In order to keep this on track, in order to keep this on track, Bill, you know, um, Scott? Approved as it is. Good. That's the majority there. I'm going to move on, Bill, to the this next one. Then. Can I back up just for one second? If you go up to the um, job description, the very last sentence kind of talks about what we have here. This position will provide direction to the HACC board and HADC board. Is that. Um, What's it? The reason I put that in there is that it's a director. So it's providing director. Who, who's he directing? It's, it's whether or not the HACC and the HADC board take the direction is up to them. Um, so is that stated at all? That I, I'm just trying to get it, if it's redundant at all, if people don't feel it, feel that way, that's fine. But serving as an advisor, is that sentence more or less stating that who's going to advise them, those two entities? Because we define that in the second bullet. Well, then, then it goes back to, then why do we call this a director position? Why is that, why is it an advisor position? I'm fine with it saying, I just thought it was a little bit redundant if the state and state wouldn't find out that. That's close enough. Okay. Um, Mr. Mayor, I think that's a question. 30 seconds. Yep, it's easy. It says, lawyer, work under the direction of the administrator, mayor, and city council. So who's his boss, or who's the position's boss? Right at the top. Supervisor is city administrator. All, all city employees work under the direction of the, uh, the mayor and city council, basically. We can assign duties, take away duties, 
to any all city. All descriptions, pretty much. All job descriptions. But the, but the mayor himself can? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And the city council can turn around and vote and override the mayor, just like the old state mayor. Right, so you can walk into Craig and say, yes. don't plow the streets today. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Well, that's why I'm reading it. That's yep. what I was asking. That's what I did. didn't know that. Probably. Yep. Thank you. Uh, so. Uh, so this this one here, uh, the the reason I had a, the only issue the reason I had a problem with it is it says uh, attend other meetings assigned by the administrator. I think that needs to be once again the mayor and uh, city council. So that's what I'd like to add. If anybody has any, if anybody have any objection to that. I should, you probably should say or. Should, it should be an or. Yes. Because obviously, obviously, like Teresa and Karen, they always ask for permission to go to meetings. This being a city position, it would be the same thing. And I would take on that whole second sentence of ten business, because that obviously will be just the second of ten business. Commercial economic development really works out so much conferences or meetings. We're already going to be. Assigning those, you know, you know, it'd be like Karen or Teresa coming and asking. Then you have a problem on them. the ones that meet weekly, like the HABC. You don't have enough time between council meetings to ask for that. I think it's you can. I think you can address that once. Address it once. Yeah, you can. You can. You can direct the individual to attend those meetings on a regular basis. And it's already addressed in the first time. Yeah. Or whatever, whatever. I don't have a problem with that sentence. This sentence here. Well, I just think it, it becomes a redundant sentence when we're going to have a meeting on some of those meetings. Yeah, but not all meetings are assigned. They come and ask for permission yeah. to yeah. travel to a workshop once in a while. Right. And or, I think that helps provide some substance as to what the expectation is. I mean, what, I, I, I'm, just trying, I'm just trying to shorten the paragraph. Yeah. I, I, I just don't want to. Yeah. I just don't want to. I'm, I'm at this point with this with this bullet point. I'm okay with it. Is, is Scott? Are you okay with that? Yes, I am. No. Wordy, that's fine. Wordy, I'm on Doyle. Yep, that's fine. Uh, Brad, yep. Ryan, yep. Mark. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that green. Okay. So then respond to request for information as directed by the HABC. I don't know why uh, this here, this is what I have a problem with. I think the person should respond to all RFIs. I think you put a period after the parenthetical. Put a period here and make that a bullet point on its own? Let's put a period there and then uh, so we've got a we've got a policy in place that states that if the, the project is outside the city limits, the director comes in and requests for Authorization to, to pursue that. I think you should. Let me, you should remain utilizing that policy. Let me just try to provide a little bit more substance to this bullet and how it's worded. It was shared with us from the AJDC that the RFIs come in, they review them, and advise the EDD what ones they should respond to or what ones they shouldn't. So that's why it was set up the way it was. Um, and, and, and that was my understanding walking out of that room and no one can trust in that. Um, so that's why it is that way. In regards to um, the three miles outside the city of Harper limits, because right now if it's outside the city of Harper limits, they need to come to us beforehand. Um, and we were trying to build in some flexibility there. So if it were, if we kind of felt three miles was close enough to two count to where it still had a strong economic impact on the community. Uh, so it's trying to build in some flexibility so the position, who's ever in that position doesn't need to come to the city council every time they want to pursue something outside yeah. of the city. They don't have to right now. Yeah, There's what, a policy in place where they can get permission <coughs> from the mayor or city administrator. Yeah. Every time is OBS. Right. So there, there, there isn't actually a past policy. It's 
part of his job description. Correct. So if we mix the old job description, we need to put it right. in. Right. So I think you should incorporate it here. The one that, yeah. that we're referring to is on, on from October 21 of 2014, bullet three. Bullet three. So any projects outside the sentence will need prior approval of city council before investing any city time into the project. If time is of the essence, prior approval for discussions can be granted by the mayor or city administrator. That way, it gives them the ability to uh, to respond without any hold up, any hold up on any of that. So that's that's what I like to see put back into. That that is that essentially the language from. Uh, Job that is a job description language. That kind of way. So I'd like to see what that put into here. So any project outside. So it should be responded to request for RFIs. That might be going easy R5, is it? Sorry. Like that. that way. So I'd, I'd like to add that and then strike this. Scott, you okay with that? Yes, uh, Bob? Three miles. It's just outside city limits. Because we're going to drop yeah. the verbiage three miles in? Yeah, I mean, it could go be back to the current policy of state. Or current, not current policy, current job description. Okay, I'm good. And the reason I'm concerned about having, being, uh, having that in there is, uh, goes back to that addition across the interstate that I'm, I don't, I would like to know if we're going to be involved with that. And that's not what, you know, that's what was in the three mile range. Outside city limits. So. Mark? Right? Yeah. Right. Uh, I, I believe I'm fine with it. My one question is, is do we really want to take the time to respond to all our five requests? I mean, would there be a point to where it's like, wow, that's just not worth it, the time and energy? Teresa, since, since you've been doing the position, how many RFIs have you had? I mean, you've got other stuff coming in from, I mean, contractors coming in kind of talking here and there. Yeah, and obviously this you know, here and there, but no GOED stuff. Yeah, no <coughs> GOED. Okay. I'm fine. Um, Your response doesn't mean that you have to follow. It could be just that we have no sites available. You right. Know, if it doesn't fit for her, for, I mean, everyone should be looked at, and then if it's not a fit, you can respond. Nick Fawshine provides those RFIs down to those board members, and uh, the EDD is a board member of Nikita, right? right. So, that's, so that gets you know brought down through that. That's how we get made aware of those RFIs. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm fine with it because it's not your we're not receiving permission from AGDC as to what wants to respond to, and as for being within three miles of town. This is the next bullet point. Provide a monthly summary of past, current, future projects, activities, city administrator, information provided for all the requests should be identified. What, who would, was there a problem with this one? Who had a question about this one? Was that you, Ryan? Um, yeah, let's see here. No, my question was in the next bullet point, actually. So, I, I think we just changed. Ryan, you have made a comment here, I thought, as you felt some of the information collected here and two bullet points further that down. Was in the, it, was, it was the next bullet point. It was in the bullet point after that. So does anybody have, does any of the council people have a problem with this bullet point? I don't have a problem with it. No, so uh, except I think the second sentence is kind of, uh, what, what, what are we talking about? The information provided for request for information 
However, the word of request that would need to be in there should include a minimum of project meeting. Is that, are, are we saying that's what goes into the RFI when the, when the individual is responding to it? No, that's where it comes to the city council and the monthly report. And the monthly report that they need to stand up and give, provide. And I think that's what we were trying to address, address Bill, and I think you had lots of concerns around the types of summaries that we received before, um, that they were vague and then much for detail. Um, I guess you Yeah, because I, 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 I think this the, the next one down below handles my concern. Okay. So I, I'm, I am, uh, what you're saying, Bill, is this RFI, I was going to do that. Information provided for, information provided for request for information should include a minimum. That's what we've done before. RFI is a request, so. Right. So council is, are you, with this being worded like this, are you okay with this bullet point? Yeah, absolutely. Anybody have an objection to it? And I'm gonna highlight it. Confidentiality should be managed by maintaining database and blah, blah, blah. Ryan, you had something with this one? Uh, I just thought it was a little bit redundant with the next bullet point after that. Well, yeah, oh, the next bullet point is about the strategic, like a strategic the next, plan. The next two. Either, and, and Ryan, just to, um, Doyle brought this one up. He thought we could potentially combine these two bullets. We left them separate for the main purpose of, there, there was large concerns with confidentiality, and there was also, the mayor had expressed a want for an economic development plan to be created, yeah. as well as others when we were so that, I agree there's potentially some redundancy between the two and how we can kind of iron that out. We can certainly talk through that. But I think that was the reason why the proposal here left them as two separate bullet points. I, I mean, I like this confidentiality as it's worked because that's what's supposed to kind of happen now. Right? I mean, that's what we're doing, what's been done. Um, I think it's really okay. Anybody have any issues with the wording of that? Or? <clears throat> well, I think it's fairly close to what we have in place yeah. now. It's a little weirder than what we have in place now, but I don't. Yeah, I I don't have an issue with that. Um, but like I said, you know, once you get in that second sentence, I think like Ryan says, I think that second, that second sentence, sentence is almost I, like I told everybody that second sentence basically says the same thing in the next bullet point. So mm -hmm. that's where I think the two. Well, yeah, wordy, but at the same time. I, I think the next bullet point, I'd like to talk about that, because my my bullet point for about the economic strategic plan is a lot more concise. Or, uh, you know, it's kind of <coughs> so I'll just throw that, this out mm -hmm. that, that everything after the city administrator and the mayor, mm -hmm. to me, that's kind of understood that ought to be, that ought to be part of what, what's being compiled, and if it's, and if it's if it turns out to be less than what the city administrator and the mayor would like to have in that database, then you've got the authority to direct that person to make the uh, database more expansive. I agree. It's more procedural. Yeah, this is, yeah. And, and I would be, I would, I, I, that was exactly what I was kind of thinking as well. So, I, I so you're talking about this here? Are you striking that? I don't think you need it. You don't think it's needed? Mark? You think it's needed? I don't think you need it. Right? It doesn't well, hurt. I don't know that we have to remove the third sentence, but because that's just saying the process oh, of collecting right. and maintaining is should be determined by the city it. administrator and mayor. Yeah. Right. You're saying Do we that? need to add city council in there? No, no, this is the whole thing of the how they need the city administrator and mayor. Yeah, I think we'd strike the second sentence if you ask me. But. So, Mark, you okay with that? Yeah, all right. Brad? Yes. Doyle? Yeah. Scott? Yes, slow to keep the database type thing flowing. Yeah, yeah. Bill? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah I'm highlight. So, the last one here. 
great maintain this is the economic strategy plan. Yeah, I'm just going to switch over to mine. Mine just two sentences. Develop and implement the strategy plan for the city. Present the. I think this allows that person to have some flexibility in what they really want to do and have them present something to the city and get everybody on board. That's that's the reason I worded the way I did. But it's got to be this person's got to be willing to do a plan and then act upon it. So um, I think it needs to be something that's put in about the annual budget because if that plan includes making some sort of budgetary changes or whatever, then it's, the city council can take action on that. So would you guys be okay if we put that in there? Any any qualms would put that in there? Well, the, my first thought is is that. An economic strategic plan. We'll go back to it, Bill. Okay. I'm, I'm, what, I'm, what I'll do is I'll put it into this. Okay. I mean, you see it side by side with the other. <coughs> I did it wrong again. Sorry. It didn't have this. So we can kind of see it all together. Develop, implement, and maintain. And it could be present the ESP recommendation. See, it's to me, it reads like he's going to develop this plan. He or she, my apologies. Uh, this person is going to develop it. Develop it. They're going to implement it, and they're going to maintain it. And then they're going to then they're going to make recommendations to the city council. Yeah, because they're going to do it for the for the next annual budget meeting. So they'll, they'll develop it, and they'll present it. Let's say this person gets hired on in January. They're going but to it develop. doesn't say develop and, and present. It says develop and implement. Well, well, between between maintain and economic strategy plan, you can just put annual in there, and we'll cover you. Or like that. however you want it to read, if it's annual or if it's a five-year plan or whatever. Well, the whole idea of this is just to try to give, this is where that person would work with the HADC and the chamber to, to look at the needs uh, and then with the city and be, be working with planning zoning. Planning zoning does a, a comprehensive plan. Now, that's kind of more of a thing. It's, I want it to be an annual thing, uh, whether it's a strategy or a comprehensive plan or something, but something so that city officials, <clears throat> might, one thing might, for the council here is that as council people come on every year, it should be a packet that the council person can get and start to understand economic development and the strategy that where the city is going. So that way, the, they're able to get brought up to speed a little bit faster. That, that's, that's, that's my thoughts behind it. Now, how that's worded or whatever, um, you know, is really up to you guys, but I think it's a, something where... Uh, I think you take out the word implement and maintain. So it just says develop annual economic strategic plan for the city, present, and you're clicking around and lose my place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> develop annual economic strategic For the city. For the city, present the ESP recommendation to the city council for approval for the annual plan. What's the grammatical? Yeah, put annual. I'm sorry. It is the council and annual economic structure plan. Okay, and then the uh, city has take out the uh, period and put the end in there in one sentence. So the mm -hmm. and present. Oops, and they'll take the entire period out of there. Yeah. yeah, that's better. That way, like I said, it gives that person some creative ability there to come up with something and present it and not only do you I, it's, I agree with you hundred percent as far as the ESP goes, uh, I, I almost would like to maybe throw a little possible caveat you know, when we request a caveat on a cover letter to spending to, to to direct a cover letter to maybe even have a brief synopsis of said candidate's ESP. Now that's going a little above and beyond, but I mean, it might give us a better direction 
on what, you know, or maybe past experience what this person has. Okay, it's so not essential at all, we just ask individually, but it might make the elimination process a little bit easier. But for, as far as this right here, are, are you guys okay with I'm that, fine with that right. bullet point? Yes. Bill? Yeah. Go ahead. Yes. Right? Yep. Right? Yep. Mark? Yeah. Okay, so. I think the one thing that you had in your job description, we kind of talked about it above, that's not included is like the inventory of community resources that are available. Is that worth the, I mean, we included it within our proposal that you had it within the draft that you had. Is that something that we should maintain? Well, I think I think if this person develops this, this, this plan and it's, it's a, a two-page plan, I think they're probably going to get told to go back to the drawing board and put more information in it pretty quick. But I think the concern was that we should be including, or we should build an inventory so something were to happen if they left that position, we have that data available similar to the database uh, that's created in the pull of bug. Oh, I see what you're saying. So that, uh, so we know where you know, and, and you had, if you go back to your proposal, you, the bullet that right underneath your economic strategy plan, you kind of had something similar, establish, maintain the database. I, I think something similar to that should be pulled on over and included potentially as well. Why can't the, why can't the mayor and city administrator just direct the individual to do that? Yeah. And that's what I call them with that and other duties and responsibilities as assigned by. Yeah, honestly, I think anybody, you know, it kind of goes that's any good is it. going to maintain a database on their own. Okay, well then, I mean, that's, um, uh, yeah, they kind of so that they could fall on our brand. Do the job without knowing what's available. Okay. But, and I think okay. also believe that that could be filled under the complete administrative group to decide by administrative group. Let's go get a name quick. Okay. So, go with that. Um, I'm going to highlight that. This one here, I think. The reason I basically look again, it doesn't include the city council, and I think uh, it just should be this yeah. duties as assigned by the city council. That's in all the job descriptions right now. Sure. Perfect. Scott? Good. Bill? Fine. Go up? Yes. Ryan? Yeah. Mark? Yeah. I've yeah. got one thing I want to add to you, Bill. So okay, the that's, that we have. Yeah, let me, that's, that's covered all the bullet points. That's covered. Uh, I don't know if this would fall under qualifications, but I just going through these other ones. Wagner Area Growth Incorporated um, job description must reside within the Wagner Community School District. I think would be a good idea for this person to reside. Actually, we have, that school school. we have it covered by the employee manual. Okay. In the employee manual, it have to be within 10 miles of our church. Within 10 miles. And that covered every a resident? Employee. No, it would be within 10 miles. You just live within 10 miles. Live within yeah, 10 miles. Live That was just my example. So, I'm just thinking about that a little bit more. Um, is that live or a resident of? You know, because, I mean, if you look, Gary was a resident of Iowa, but he lived in Hartford. Right? Well, so I'll say that. No, technically he was a resident of Hartford. He lived here over 30 days. Okay. Any, any other changes, additions? But we need to do this. Not? Clean it up. Or, uh, let's look. Yeah. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Tracy. And we can print it out, clean it up. But are we going to do something that kind of addresses 
big a day versus, you know, probably going to kind of spell that out a little bit as to what they should be doing and what they shouldn't. It's not in there. I know, that's what I'm saying. So if they get direction from HADC, the chamber, to whatever, to let us I think, I think one of their event, is that something that's going to get contention from the council? Or what I'm saying is, like I said, Gary did things that, you know, got him in hot water. It may have been covered under job description, some of the things may not. And we went through that job description and revised it like four times. So. We don't spell out any if, of if, that in this one. If we start spelling all that out, then it's going to be, well, it's then they're going to be, okay, this is, this, this, and that. It's, it, then, then the page is going to get back up to 10 pages long again. Okay, and that's fine. And, yeah. and I'm good. I'm just saying, is the council going to let this person have that discretion of what they, well, they should be doing it's, or not? Well, it's not in there. So the person's not doing it. That's, I mean, they actually, it's going to assist as a coordinator, but it's a matter of if, if you're, if, 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 if you see this person doing something that you feel is too much one way, or I see something, I can make changes. I can ask that person, not, I can tell that person not to do that. I mean, that's the city employee that it comes down to. Yeah, I just that's don't want to give the same position that, you know, half the council thinks they should be doing this and half of them don't, and then there's no direction for this person again. Well, I think that's going to get vetted out a little bit when we, as we hire this person, go through. Because they're going to be asking, "What am I doing?" and what, "What's going on?" And, and it can be part of that. It's fine. I just yeah. keep that in mind. Because I think some of this that this happened is because uh, that position was a HADC position before, and the chamber was get, just getting off the ground. So there's a lot of things that, that person was doing. Yeah. I think the chamber's taken on and done a lot of good stuff on their own now. And uh, I've gotten a lot more, you know, I've gotten both legs underneath them a little bit. So, because um, like I said, you're going to have, I, I, this description, you start getting too, yeah, too no deep in the weeds, it's going to be what we missed then next. Do. Okay. Okay. So I'm going I'm to uh, take off the tracker and I'm going to give this to Teresa to print out so everybody can have a copy of it before. Save what you got here. Yeah. So you can come back with this. But, yeah, it'll be one break your chain and we'll see what it looks like.